Hey everybody, it's Al with CAD CAM Wizard and today we're going to go through a machining example here using one of my favorite tool paths, Flow. So we're going to just kind of step through and talk about some of the options in this strategy that you may or may not be familiar with and just show a use case or one scenario where you could utilize this strategy. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's close this out. And I'm just gonna copy the model here. I was gonna show how to draw draw it as well, but I think uh, just getting into the machining should be fine. We take a look at it. We just have an angled surface here, so nothing too complicated. Uh, first step up is just getting the job going. Uh, we'll go ahead and select our workpiece. We'll use the min max. Uh, when, our set, when we're setting our zero here, we're gonna snap to this back corner. So we can click on this line close to that snap point and it will snap to that back corner. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is just adjust this, this position down here. All that does is move the model up for the simulation, okay? All right, so we got the job set up. Uh, the first thing we want to do is just face off the top of it. So we'll right click on the machine setup and come down to mill facing. I'm just going to change the tool size to begin with uh, to like a two inch face mill and compute. All right, so we get some tool path on the screen. Uh, a couple of things I want to update. I want to have it start on the right side and I want to make this link move uh, an arc. And then I also don't want the first cut to be exactly 50%, so I want to bump it over. So let's update those settings. We'll double click on the facing routine. Uh, we're gonna come down to patterns and choose this corner here. I'm gonna adjust my step over to, let's say 45%. I'm gonna use this first offset. I'm just gonna offset this uh, maybe a little bit bigger to adjust uh, where that first cut is. And then the other thing I wanna do is change the links from direct to an arc and then compute. All right, so now we have our facing routine to come in here and to face off the part. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the stock. Okay, and I'm gonna turn the visibility of the facing cycle off. I wanna make sure that I'm not uh, clicked on the, the face feature, otherwise I'll have that preview showing. Now from here, I wanna rough out the material, so I'm gonna right click on the machine setup, come down to mill three axis, and uh, we're gonna select this geometry, so a window picket. Uh, from here, we're gonna to go to the machining strategy, and this will be an advanced rough. So load one of those in. Uh, update the tool to just an end mill. Uh, offset pattern is fine. The parameters here, so the depth of cut, I want to keep it shallow because we're on a, a, a shallowed angled surface, so I want to remove as much material as possible. And then the step over, I'm going to just take the tool size and uh, use a third of it for the step over. Uh, the machining tolerance, because I'm roughing, I'm just going to loosen this up. And that's about it. Let's go ahead and compute that. And that's gonna give us our roughing routine to remove the material. Now, from here, our next step is to get the flow toolpath loaded. So we're gonna right click on the machine setup, come down to mill multi-axis. Uh, you need a mill premium license or greater in order to have access to this. I'm gonna choose uh, surface and then flow line and we'll choose next. I'll go ahead and just change this half inch end mill to a half inch ball mill. And then I'm gonna to go to parameters. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just limit this to three axis, and then I'm gonna select the drive surface. Now, uh, the drive surface is gonna be the geometry you wanna machine. In this case, it's just this angled surface. Uh, flow line is a single surface strategy, so we're only gonna address one surface at a time. And this is the only surface I want to target. Now, unlike some of the other strategies, I'm going to go ahead and compute this. Um, the direction of the tool path here is based off the surface itself, and we can choose from the long or the short. Um, and in this case, I want to go uphill. 
So I'm going to come back, double click on flow here, go to parameters, and I'm going to change this from long to short. I'll go ahead and recompute, and now we can see the toolpath is going in the direction that I want. Now, another thing that we want to do is we want to make sure the tool starts off the surface and finishes off the surface. So right here you can see it's not quite going all the way past there and uh, even when it starts it's it's starting kind of right on the edge or plunging on the edge so we're going to use an extension for that so we'll double click on flow again go back to parameters and in this area section here we can check on the extend and trim and this we're going to say uh, just 25 percent We'll choose OK and recompute, and you can see how that will then extend out the toolpath. Okay? All right. The next thing I want to do, if we look at this from a side view here, you can see the tool comes down at a straight angle and then goes over, and then it exits at a straight angle. And we also have uh, straight angles here, right? So I want to smooth that out by adding some radiuses to the lead in, the lead out, and then also the linking positions. So let's double click on the flow. We're gonna go to parameters. We're gonna go to links. And the first area, we wanna turn on the lead in and lead out. Right now it says don't use lead in and lead out. So we're gonna say use lead in. This one we're gonna say use lead out. Uh, the other thing is we wanna have it use a lead in and lead out between each pass. So where it says links between slice here, uh, right now we wanna change this to use lead in and out, okay? The next thing we wanna do is go to this default lead in and lead out setting, and we're gonna change this from a tangential arc, we're gonna make it a vertical tangent arc, and then I wanna adjust the, the arc diameter to be 50% of the cutter. I'll use this arrow to pass those settings over to the lead out and choose OK. So that's going to adjust the lead in and lead out position at the start and end of the cut and it will also generate a, a, a vertical arc on the lead in and lead out of each of the, the step overs. Now to get into the, the rapid and the, the linking position at the top of the job we go to retracts here and you'll see in this section here it says arc fit so I'm going to turn both of these on, uh, clearance area and rapid distance, and I'm just going to change this to a quarter inch. From here I'll choose OK, and then I'll go ahead and recompute the toolpath. So now you can see it's going to come down, radius in, go along the angle, radius out, come up, radius over, radius down. Okay, so a neat, neat little feature. Now, if you do want to keep the tool closer if we don't want to have all this air movement we want to bring it down a little bit uh, you can come back into here under the links tab and then instead of retract to clearance area we could say retract to rapid distance and then recompute and you'll see how that brings this down so it's not quite as high all right so that adds the radiuses the next thing we want to talk about is where the toolpath is starting from. So if you look at it, it's starting right on the wall here and then working its way up. And what I'd prefer it to do is start in the center and then work its way out this way and then start in the center and work its way out that way. So you can, there is an option in here to have it start in the center and work its way out, but uh, I don't necessarily like uh, like the way that that looks there's this from center away and we can recompute you can see it does this kind of crisscross pattern uh, and, and and that probably works in a lot of scenarios but it's not what I want to do in this example so let's turn this back to the standard and recompute uh, but though that could be very useful in many examples instead I'm going to choose to use a boundary in order to contain the toolpath so I can have it cut on this side first and then have it cut on that side. So before I can get the boundary going, what I wanna do is create a new layer, and then I wanna convert the edges. So we're gonna use extract edges again, project to Z plane, Z zero. We'll click on this face and then choose okay. So that gives us the wireframe boundary uh, for that surface. 
The next thing I want to do is just generate a line down the center here. So I'm going to do line. I'll wake up this uh, line here, grab that snap point, wake up this line here, grab this snap point. Now, currently we still have a solid line here and a solid line here. And I need to be able to select this square as one boundary and this square as another boundary. So I got to break that geometry. So I'll go to utilities, break many, window in the geometry and choose OK. So now what we'll have is this line is broken. So that will allow me to select those uh, edges as a boundary. Now to add the boundary to the flow toolpath, we're going to come over to flow, double click on it. We're going to go to parameters and we'll do 2D containment. We'll click on 2D containment. We'll click on 2D containment curves and then we're going to select these edges. From there we'll choose OK, choose OK again, and then recompute. So this has allowed it to isolate it to that side, but it's still starting on the wall. Okay, so what we want to do is change that by getting back into flow and then going to parameters. And then this sorting option here for flip step over, we just turn that on and then we can recompute. All right, so now it's going to start from the inside at the bottom, work its way up, and then come back. All right, now, so we got it on one side. We want to do the same thing on this other side. So I want to copy my selection and all my toolpath settings. So I'm going to right click on this feature and come down to where it says copy with geometry. Then I'm going to right click again on that feature and choose paste. So now I get a duplicate of this feature in all its settings here. Actually, if I recompute it, you'll see it will be in the same location. So what I want to do now is update our boundary or a containment boundary. So I'm going to double click on flow. I'm going to go to parameters. I'm going to click on 2D containment, 2D containment curves. I'll go back to a top view. I'm going to, if, because we're select deselect, so I can just window pick over those edges to deselect it and then window pick over these edges to select it. From there I'll choose OK and OK. Now I'm going to uncheck flip step over and recompute. And I just want to make sure that it's cutting in the right order. So I'm going to choose back plot. You can see it starts from the center and then work, works its way out. OK. So now we have both our flow routines to cut the way that I want to cut it. So the next thing we want to do here, let's go ahead and blank that out. We'll turn the model back on. Is I just want to uh, break an edge here around the top. So I'm going to use the deburring toolpath. So we'll right click on the machine setup, come down to mill multi axis, and we'll choose deburring. Choose next. I'm going to use the same uh, half inch ball mill, that's fine. I'll go to parameters. Now, again, I'm going to make sure this is limited to three axis. Uh, from here, I'm going to select the part geometry. So I just use this button here, and then I'm going to select the entire model and then choose OK. Now, under the edge detection, you have uh, exclude curves or include curves. So I'm going to choose include curves. And then I'm going to pick what edges that I want to select. Okay, so I'm going to use tangent and turn this one off. And I'll left click on this edge here and that will get that curve. I'm going to, let's do constant Z for this one. So I'll left click here and it goes in a constant Z. And then I'm going to turn that one off and click here. And that gets us all our edges. All right. So from here, I'm going to choose OK. Uh, we can adjust the size of the edge break. And then I'm going to compute. And that will go in and break all the edges on the top and the walls of this shape. Now, the last thing I want to do is run a profile around the outside. So let's go ahead and blank this one out. I'll create a new layer and make it active. From here, I'm going to do 2D extract edges, project to Z0 is fine. I'm going to go ahead and pick this bottom face and then I'll choose OK. All right, so from here, I just want to add a small chamfer in the corners. So we're going to do chamfer, chains. 
I'm going to set the size of it. Okay, we're going to do auto chaining. I don't know. Let's turn them all on. Let's click once. It didn't do it. Uh, let's see. Okay, that seems to have it all. I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. And what we're doing is just adding this little chamfer in here. So let's get back into the cam. We're going to load a profile routine. So we'll right click on the setup, mill to axis, select geometry. Let's go ahead and select this profile. Chain start position, I want to move it over here. Uh, I think this is like two inches, so we'll go two. I'm just going to do a, a finish in this example. I'm going to bump the tool size up, so this is a 750. I'll come into the leads and I want to use a, a blended. There's a couple of different ways you could deal with comp in this case. And uh, your lead in and lead out uh, uh, matters depending on what kind of comp you're using. So in this case, I'm just letting Bobcat comp for it. I'm going to go ahead and compute the tool path. And you can see we get the tool to come on over here and run around. But what I want to do is get a little bit of an overlap here. So I'll get back into here under leads and I'll go to overlap and I'll add an overlap amount and that will adjust the way that lead is. So there you have it. We got our facing routine to come in and face off the top of the part. We have our roughing routine to remove the material from the cavity. We have our flow line to machine center out from one side, center out from the other side a deburring routine to come in and break the edges on the top, and then a profile with a deburr to finish the size and break the edge, uh, the vertical edges. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, just reply back to wherever you might find this video. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Uh, if you have any requests, topics, things that you'd like to learn more about, uh, just comment wherever this video may be posted, and I'll see what I can do to accommodate for that. All right, guys, have a good one.